Alright, so by popular request, it's IG back again with another Linux distro review and today we are looking at the KDE version of Fedora 17. Okay, so I asked you last video if you guys wanted to see a KDE review of Fedora 17. And it looks like you do want to see a review of KDE, so here we are. Now I'm not going to go over uh, over the Fedora core stuff as the as I covered that in the previous review and other reviews that I've done of Fedora, so I shall put an annotation here for you to have a look at. And as far as KDE is concerned, we are rocking KDE 4.8.3, uh, which, uh, to, at least in my opinion, it hasn't changed that much from KDE 4.8 at the initial release. Of course, there are always bug fixes. One thing that I have noticed, though, is that the startup time from when you log into KDE is much quicker now. Um, before, when you logged in, even when you uh, even when you wound up at the desktop, you would still have to wait for a bit for everything to sort itself out, especially down in the system tray. Again, this is all too reminiscent of Windows, and uh, but it's good to see they've kind of sorted that out now. So it, it actually is pretty snappy from when you log in. And yes, of course, I am running this in a virtual machine and it still is doing fairly decently as far as performance is concerned. Now, as far as a Fedora release goes, KD, the KDE respin of Fedora is very much vanilla KDE. Just like GNOME is very much vanilla with the main release of Fedora, you do get a very, very, very pure KDE experience. So pretty much all of the applications that are installed by default are the KDE showcase. So we've got a handful of games here, nothing really to write home about. And graphics, of course, we just have a lot of the K tools, not including Digicam, as that application is a bit too beefy for a 600 meg download. And you can see here under internet, again, all the standard KDE applications, including the only web browser, which uh, which is Conqueror. Now, I don't mind Conqueror that much, but it it is a little bit laggy, and it has had stability issues, especially uh, in relation to Flash. So you can see here uh, we've got Conqueror loaded and uh, by default it uses the KHTML engine which uh, which was developed by the KDE team some time ago. It's a little bit of an antiquated engine, obviously they're still working on it, but uh, the, the more modern version is of course WebKit which you can change. But I would like to see WebKit used as default as, to be honest, it's probably more of a web standard than what, uh, than what K KHTML is. So uh, also it's rumored that WebKit is a little bit faster, but who's to say? Again, Fedora is considered to be very purely open source, so you don't get any proprietary software at all uh, with the with the default release. Um, so that means you are going to have to download all of the web plugins and media plugins to play all of your videos and uh, and YouTube vids, etc. But of course, KDE itself is quite smooth. Compositor is working very nicely, and the KDE tools talk to each other very nicely as well. You got some interesting translation tools here, as well as the download manager that comes by uh, by default with KDE, which is KGET. And of course, we also have the uh, Kmail client, and then we also have a few other uh, personal information management suites, which you'll usually find under Office. Uh, called Contact. Now we've all seen Contact before, and I'm just going to have a quick look because it's been a little while since I had a look at it, and. Uh, you can see here that it comes up and asks me to provide personal data, including uh, email addresses and such, uh, and so forth and so on, so it can pull in my email for me. And I've gotten all sorts of crazy pop-ups saying the Akinadi tray is broken. So that's not that good, but getting this application to behave shouldn't take too long. And once you've got your personal, uh, once you've got your account settings in here, then it will synchronize them all up for you. Would be great to see if they could uh, synchronize with Outlook Exchange servers uh, without too much messing around because that's really what the enterprise is built off, unfortunately. Uh, but having said that, with uh, with Contact, you really do have a very viable solution here uh, in comparison to Outlook in that you've got your mail, you've got contacts, calendars, which all of which can, uh, can synchronize with Google, uh, with your Google uh, both contacts and your Google Calendar. So that is quite convenient. And it's usually all you have to do is search for the uh, plugin that comes for this with KDE. All you have to do is do a simple plugin into the Akinati server and it will pull in your Google contacts and Google calendar details. You've got a to-do list, you've got some feeds, you've got a journal here, some notebooks, 
and you got pop-up notes as well. Now, one other topic that I want to bring up here is the inclusion of the Caligra Suite as the first kind of stable release of the Caligra Suite, which is KDE Office Applications. Uh, now, I have not spent too much time in KDE Office, to be honest with you. Uh, now, previously, this was K Office, the K Office Suite, which then got, uh, which then forked into the uh, Caligra Suite, uh, it got taken over, and uh, and it's been in heavy development since. Uh, so it's great to see that they finally included this as a stable version in KDE by default because it really completes the KDE application suite that uh, that they've been working on for such a long time. Uh, this is quite a stable. Uh, this is quite a stable text editor. So you have Caligra words for your word processing. And of course you have spreadsheet for the uh, Excel type equivalent and then you've got presentation obviously Caligra stage uh, there as well. So that's good stuff. It does work how it says. Obviously, the layout is a little bit different to what you would expect uh, as far as Microsoft Office or even LibreOffice is concerned because you do have more of a tabbed interface running running down the side here as opposed to having a whole bunch of buttons up the top. Of course, you can do it all via the menus, which is a little bit clumsy. But once you figure out how this application works, it is quite powerful and you can really get stuff done with it. Uh, I'm not going to say I have, I have much experience with this at all, but what I have noticed in that the brief amount of time that I have been mucking around with it, it certainly is a lot more stable than what K Office was even a year ago. So well done on the Caligra team, and of course well done on Fedora for impl implementing a very vanilla and smooth unifying KDE experience uh, that really doesn't include any other extra libraries that might bog your system down. Consequently, this system really flies. There's there's near an operating system that could outdo it, uh, at least in overall desktop responsiveness. But of course, that's just the nature of running a system on modern hardware. And especially as time goes on, it's only going to get more and more optimized. We also have a pretty interesting uh, file manager here known as Crusader, which basically gives you a graphical front end to do a lot of uh, a lot of terminal tools that you can uh, that you can use, such as batch renaming, checksums, email client, etc. Now I'm sure there are other people that know way more about this stuff than I do, so I am going to simply move on. So you can see here that this is a super powerful file manager that you could literally do whatever you want with. Uh, and, and, and like I said, it packs in a lot of the terminal tools that a lot of the power users use. And at the same time, it pro provides a fairly nice interface here to interact with your files and folders and punch them around in any way you so choose. It also has like keyboard shortcuts built into it. So it makes it a lot easier for those of you who are keyboard navigated, which would then bring to mind why you're not doing it in the terminal in the first place. But let's move on. We've got the Fedora Live USB creator here as well, which is uh, simply for, um, for flashing the image onto a flash drive. And of course we have the package manager, which is APA. Now APA, in my opinion, does uh, resemble the Ubuntu software center of many years ago, as in Ubuntu 10.04. And you can see here that while the icons do look quite ugly, we do have uh, some categories here to speak of. And you can find lists of updates here that are available. Everything is quite nicely iconographed for all of those who uh, that have icons, and then you have all your libraries underneath. Uh, and so you can simply select all of these updates and install them as you see fit. But more importantly, you've got categories of applications here that you can jump into and, and of course they're empty. I've got no idea why. But if I was to search for Firefox, for example, it will hopefully show up with the Mozilla Firefox web browser, which indeed it does. Again, it's possible that the proxy that I have set up is going to be messing around with this application somewhat. But you can see here, you can configure in your repositories here through the GUI as opposed to the terminal, even though the terminal, in my opinion, is faster with Fedora. So APA is a nice extension to the KDE desktop in that it does make it a little bit easier to install applications. Not the easiest trick in the book, uh, but it is better than the GNOME tool, I must say. So that's the wrap on KDE 4.8.3 on Fedora 17. Uh, let me know in the comments below if there, if you still want me to have a look at Corora 17 KDE, which uh, has actually been delayed uh, as far as its release is concerned. I am gonna be looking very shortly at uh, at Zorin OS 6, as well as Solus OS. I really wanna get around to reviewing that distribution, as well as, as well as Linux Deepin when that comes stable. So there are plenty of things to talk about. And as well, we also have Pingai OS 12.04, which I do wanna have a look at as as well. So much going on in the Linux world, world at the moment, so I shall see you in the very near future. And also I'll just throw in a quick announcement here. I'm doing a bit of a, I'm doing a bit of a, an experiment project here. I have been asked by a few people whether I would be able to look at uh, free software available on, uh, on Mac. And, uh, and while that has crossed my mind from time to time, and especially during app reviews, I do like to look at the Mac side of things, uh, at least a software that is available for Mac. 
But in the interest of the subscribing audience, uh, if you guys would like to see me do some uh, Macintosh stuff, I think the cheapest legal way for me to do that would be to get a Mac Mini. Uh, they're about $600, $700. I can get one refurbished as well. But I've put a donate, I've put a donate link on the on the front page of my channel, so you can check that out as well. Uh, again, it's no big deal, but to put it in a more realistic terms, it would only take about one sixth of my subscribers to donate one dollar, and I would have a uh, and I would have a Mac Mini to do videos for. So thank you very much again, everybody, for your support, and I really appreciate it. But that will be all from me, and I shall see you in the very near future. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.